In this video, we'll learn how indirect evaporative coolers work. By using indirect evaporative cooling, some buildings can eliminate mechanical refrigeration-based systems while reducing environmental impact. Indirect evaporative coolers use air-to-air -air heat exchangers to optimize approach temperatures. We'll show you four systems that use the indirect evaporative cooling method. Indirect evaporative cooling in a data center. An indirect evaporative cooler can be used to cool a data center while saving large amounts of energy. See our video on data centers for a better explanation of the systems used for cooling data centers. Hot air from the servers is captured in a hot aisle and brought into the indirect evaporative cooler where it travels through the primary side of the heat exchanger where it gives up its heat to the secondary side. See our video on heat exchangers for a better understanding of plate and frame heat exchangers. The cold air is then sent back to the data center through an underfloor distribution system. The cold air exits through floor grills and travels back into the server racks where it picks up the heat of the servers and begins the cycle again. On the secondary side of the indirect evaporative cooler's heat exchanger, there are fans mounted on top of the unit that pulls outside air through the heat exchanger as water is sent trickling down, causing the water to evaporate and absorb heat through the walls of the heat exchanger. If the indirect evaporative process can't meet the load because of unfavorable outdoor ambient conditions, a second phase of cooling can be added. This secondary cooling can be achieved by using a DX or chilled water coil. Indirect evaporative cooling of air-cooled chillers. Indirect evaporative cooling is also used to cool down the condenser coils of an air-cooled chiller. Panels containing wetted medium can be attached around the air-cooled chiller effectively closing off the pathway for the condenser fan inlet air. This causes the condenser inlet air to travel through the media, which is sprayed with water based on the ambient temperature and the compressor's liquid line temperature. This pre-cools the incoming air before it travels over the warm condenser coils allowing for increased energy efficiency. Before attaching the panels, the condenser coils should be cleaned to ensure the best performance. Packaged air conditioners and indirect evaporative cooling. This is another method of using indirect evaporative cooling to pre-cool air before it enters the condenser coil of a packaged DX unit. This also allows for increased efficiency. Indirect evaporative cooling using a fluid cooler. There is another method of providing indirect evaporative cooling by providing a fluid cooler that feeds a cooling coil within an air handler. The fluid cooler provides indirect cooling by spraying water over an enclosed coil that circulates water through an air handler. The coil in the air handler absorbs heat from the space or outdoor air and circulates it to the tower where it gives up its sensible heat to the cool moist air. The water circulated in the indirect evaporative cooler never mixes with the water circulated in the air handler coil. If this doesn't provide enough cooling, then a secondary system can be added like an evaporative cooling section or a chilled water coil as shown here fed by an air-cooled chiller. The difference between a direct evaporative cooler and an indirect evaporative cooler is that a direct evaporative cooler will add moisture to the air, thereby increasing the humidity, and the indirect evaporative cooler doesn't add moisture to the space. When water evaporates from a liquid to a vapor by the process of the heat of vaporization, sensible heat is absorbed from the air 
causing the air temperature to drop. Indirect evaporative coolers use two separate air streams separated by the heat exchanger walls. The secondary air stream uses the evaporative process where water trickles down over air being exhausted from the building or by the use of outside air. This causes some of the water to evaporate and absorb heat from the primary air stream through the heat exchanger wall. The heat exchanger keeps the wet air stream separate from the primary dry air flow to the space. Indirect evaporative coolers work best in low humidity areas with design wet bulb temperatures below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, allowing for an energy savings over mechanical refrigeration cooling. The use of air conditioners contributes to the largest consumption of peak demand on the U.S. electricity grid and is the primary cause of blackouts and grid failures. The problem is increased on high ambient temperature days. Benefits of evaporative cooling. One, it can reduce or eliminate mechanical refrigeration or chiller usage. Two, overall energy savings. Three, initial cost is less than refrigerated air conditioning. Four, reduced maintenance costs with less skilled maintenance personnel. Five, works good in dry climates. Six, can save water when compared to a water-cooled chiller plant. Seven, the ability to increase the amount of outdoor air for improved indoor air quality. Eight, environmentally friendly as there are no refrigerants, CFCs, or HCFCs. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.